Let's move to fields. What is a field? So, you know, one of the, one of the challenges for writing this book um, was that almost all of the concepts that you need to understand how modern physics works, they're, they're one or two steps away from something that you understand. But they're always one or two steps. And the hard part is that that means that a reader at each chapter or each section of the book has to make one or two steps beyond what is natural to think about. They have to take on a new concept. And then for the book to work, they have to come together. Yeah. It's always better when you're trying to explain something if you have fewer steps to go. And fields, we actually do know what they are, but we don't think about them the way physicists need to. So, for example, uh, it, when someone asks me what is a field, one of the biggest problems is they have in their mind that a field should be a thing. It's a natural question because, I mean, it's a noun, and a lot of nouns are things, right? So, you know, if I ask you what is a couch, well, a couch is a thing you sit on, it's got arms, okay. But a field is not a thing, and that's a problem because um, what we have to do then is talk about the things that fields are related to. So let me give you an example. Air is a thing, okay? Air is the stuff we breathe. Air is the molecules that are in this room. It's a thing. What is air pressure? Well, pressure is not a thing. It's a noun for sure, but it's a property of the air tells you something about the air. It reveals what the air is doing. It will tell you that if we measured the force on the walls of this room, that's how hard the air molecules are pushing on the wall. But it's not a thing. Now, what if I told you, um, here's a, a property like pressure, of a thing, but I don't know what the thing is. That's kind of abstract and hard to think about. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what we're dealing with when we talk about the fields of the universe. So let me explain that a little more thoroughly. So air pressure is an ordinary field. It is a property of air. It's not a thing. What are its characteristics? Well, um, air pressure can be different at different places in the room. It can vary from moment to moment. It can vary from place to place. There are equations that physicists have figured out that tell you how the pressure might change over time. So it's something concrete. It's something we can talk about. It's something we can uh, write equations for, and it's something we can measure. That's what barometers are for. So that's one field of air not the only one. Density. How much air is there in a little cube? How much? Well, the amount of air per unit volume is another field. Again, density is not a thing. It's a property of the air. The wind. How fast is the air flowing? That's another field. The humidity. How much water vapor, relatively speaking, is in a, a certain amount of air? Well, all of these things are fields. They're something you can measure with some sort of device. They vary from place to place and from time to time. They influence each other, which is interesting. They're not independent. And a set of scientists working in the 19th century can figure out how to write down equations for how they influence each other and how they work. But none of them is a thing. The word air, refer, or the, the atmosphere as a whole, refers to something we would call, as, a, as physicists, we would call it a medium. That's the thing. And the fields are telling us about the thing and how it works. And in the case of air, we have all the information. We know what air is. We know what it's made of. And we can write down the pressure, the temperature. We can measure the pressure, the temperature, the density, the, the wind. And we can write down equations which tell us how they all work and interact with each other. Now, that's all great. When you come to particle physics or even before it, 19th century uh, physics of electromagnetism, people discovered that it was convenient to talk about something called fields, which you could measure, and you could eventually figure out how to write equations for. You didn't really know what it was. 
And in retrospect, I think the best way to think about it is that it's a little bit like air pressure or air density. It's not a thing. It's probably telling us some properties of the universe. But we don't know what properties because we don't really understand what the universe is. So whereas for air, we can say, okay, pressure is telling us what air molecules are doing. In the case of the electric field, we don't know what it's telling us. And that makes the idea very abstract. It's not that the idea of a field is that strange. We know about it in the context of air pressure. It's that in the context of the universe, it's abstract because we're missing information, a lot of it. So what physicists have done over the last century or so, really two centuries if you count electromagnetism, is we've learned that the language of fields is a useful one. It is useful to think about the things that we are measuring in terms of some sort of property of the universe or properties of the universe that can be measured at individual places that change from time to time and from place to place for which equations can be written. These things influence each other. And it turns out that we can make a darn good description of what the universe does by writing down fields and equations that describe them. We can use those equations to make predictions for experiments that work. And in the end, that's the justification. The concept of fields is a good one because when we use it and we write down equations for it and make predictions using it, it matches with experiment beautifully over and over and over again. Now, what are these fields? I don't know. I don't know what the electric field is. I don't know what the electron or the quark fields are. But I know a lot about what they do. I know how to make predictions about what, they'll, what they will do in experiments. So that's where, we, that's where we are. And so it's important to understand that while physicists understand what fields do with great detail, they don't really understand what they are, with one exception. The only exception, and that is the gravitational field. And that's because of Einstein and his idea that the gravitational field, a property of something, what is it a property of? Well, Einstein said it's a property of space and time themselves. The gravitational field is telling us the curvature, the degree of warping of space and time. And that's the only example we have where there's a field, the gravitational field, and an explanation, as we have for air pressure, of what it is and what it does. Ideally, someday we'll understand what all the fields do, what all the fields are as properties of the universe or something in the universe, or maybe some other concept uh, will arise in between. We'll think about it some completely different way. But whereas for air and its fields, we understand very well what's going on. For the universe, we understand almost nothing. There are fields out there. We don't know what they mean, with the exception of the gravitational field, which seems to be the curvature of space and time. So where does this leave us? The universe is this sort of substance-like thing, maybe. We don't really understand that. It has, it's useful at least to describe it as having a shape which uh, is described by the, by the gravitational field. And there are these other fields which are also present everywhere in the universe, just as the gravitational field is. Maybe they are telling us something about the universe too, but we don't know what. And that's where we are. So one shouldn't understand particle physics and, 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 and its use of fields as, as if we understand everything. It's far from the case. We have this beautiful theory, the standard model of particle physics, which predicts everything that happens at the Large Hadron Collider and all sorts of other experiments that we do. But that does not mean that we have some sort of fundamental understanding. It also, uh, also implies that we're not even sure that the concept of fields will survive long-term scrutiny. I mean, these are the useful terms now. There are always people trying to think of things in different ways. My colleague Nima Arkani Hamed would love to get rid of the concept of fields and space-time altogether, and he may well succeed someday. Um, so any terms that we use and any approach that we use to understanding physics is always provisional. 
It works beautifully now. Someday we may find experiments where it doesn't work. We may find other ways of thinking about it that are better. But for now, this is the way we think about it uh, in, in mainstream quantum field theory. Thank <laughs> you.